so I'm now ready to bind. And because I'm going to be binding by machine, um, and both sides of my binding will be machined, um, I, some people like to machine it on and then hand sew it down to the back. I like to machine it to the back, bring it round to the front and machine sew it down to do that. So I'll just start the binding so that you can see how I do that. And I've got my binding already. Again, when I cut my binding strips and the pattern tells you how wide to cut them, they're two and a half inches wide um, and there's several of them. So I join it all into one great long strip and again I do the diagonal join because that doesn't give me any bulk uh, when, we, when it's sort of running through and you get to a join. Sometimes the joins occur on corners which is very inconvenient and would be much harder to achieve if you were um, trying to do it with a straight join as well. So I've got my quilt here. Going to fall off the table today and we're all set to go because we've already got the walking foot on again walking the walking foot's a really good idea when you're binding because of all these um, multiple layers with that spongy bit in the middle and so I'll just get started and show you how I start and go around one of the corners so that you can see that and then I'll show you when I've got it all on how to sew it down onto the front so this time I am wanting to use a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I want it to be just slightly bigger than the seam where I was sewing the flange on so that we cover that seam. Um, so I do know more or less where a quarter of an inch is on this machine so hopefully I get it right. So I've, I've folded the top corner of my binding down so that I've got a nice folded edge coming here but these edges are straight and I'm just going to start that off, do a little back stitch and then I'm going to come down to the end of this bit where the folded bit comes over and again I'm just going to finish off with a little back stitch. I'm going to take it out and then I'm going to start. I don't uh, generally oh, I'm standing on it. I don't generally um, pre-fold my bindings. I like to do it as I'm sewing and bring the raw edges together because I feel that when I roll that over I get a more I don't know, I, I prefer that edge when I'm rolling it over rather than a hard fold that when you roll it over sometimes isn't sitting in quite the right place. I don't know if I've said that right, but that's the way it is. Okay, so now I've, I had stopped sewing there. I'm now going to bring my raw edges together and I'm going to leave it maybe two or three inches and then start sewing so that there's a little opening there so that when I come around and join up, I can tuck my end into that. So again, I'm just going to start here. And I'm just going to go up to the corner now and I'm going to stop sewing about a quarter of an inch before I get to the very end. And you could put a marker in if you wanted to. And I'm just going to guess today because that's what I seem to be doing. Take it out. I did a little back stitch there. Then I'm going to turn that around and bring my raw edges out and I'm going to fold it so that the, the fold goes right through the corner of the quilt there so that you get that nice diagonal fold and then I'm going to bring that back down again so that the fold now is level with the edge of the quilt so that you've got a straight edge there and I'm going to start sewing right from the edge and come along so you've got this little folded bit sitting in there. And then I'm going to continue on with my quarter inch seam allowance all the way and now I'm going to do repeat that on the corners each time and then I'll come back and I'll show you how I join it back in when I get to the other end. So I've been pretty much all the way around the quilt. I'm just coming up to where we started. So I thought I could show you just how I tuck the end of my binding into that little bit that I left open. So I'm nearly there. So I just keep sewing and when I get to this point that we started with, I just overlap that and then I'm going to trim off the excess binding length. 
So I'm over the, onto that point now. And because I'd left a gap through here of two to three inches, I can now trim off my binding so that it's somewhere less than the gap is, so that it will sit within that space. And I don't need any more of that now. And so now I'm going to open up that bit that's sitting there, still keeping the raw edges even on the right. Tuck that end right in there. Bring the fold back. Just make sure that it's all sitting nice and firm ahead of where you're sewing and just keep sewing. Until I come back to where I started the stitching there. So that was pretty straightforward. Now just sometimes that overlap creates a little bit of bulk. So I might just come in and I might just trim some of the extra fabric that's sitting inside there so that it doesn't cause us a problem afterwards. I think on this quilt it's probably fine, but different uh, quilts are a little bit different with battings and fabrics and things. So I've just got that nice, and that's just a little folded edge that's just tucked in. And then I'm going to show you now how I roll that over to the front side so that I can machine it down. And I'm just going to start machining, doesn't really matter where you start and stop. When we, well I suppose I can start and stop just near where I've got the join so that I can show you that. But I'm actually going to start before the corner so that you can just see me go around a corner. And then I'll come and just run over that join so that you can see how it sits. Um, so I've got my binding stitched to the back. So I'm going to pull that out now, I'm going to roll that to the front. And I just want to cover that that row of stitching that we've just done so that there's just a nice little bit of the yellow showing. And I'm just going to stitch close to the edge of the grey on the, on the front. And what we'll probably find is we may well see a little line of stitching on the back, but in actual fact you probably won't notice it, um, rather than doing rolling it the other way um, and sewing it down by hand. I personally would never get it done if I had to do it all by hand. So this is why I do it this way, but I quite like the finish as well. So I'm just pulling that up. I'm not pulling it necessarily as tight as I might or anything. I'm just so that I get a nice even amount of the yellow showing so that as I stitch it down, I've got a nice little bit showing there. So it's just a matter of being a little bit careful with the, how far that comes across. And then when I'm getting to the corner here, because we did that little foldy bit, when we turn the corners, I can just bring that over. So when I'm nearly there, you may find a pin is helpful at this stage to pop a pin in. So I'm bringing that fold straight towards me and then I'm going to bring up the corner so that it sits with a nice mitre in there and again that nice um, sort of even amount of yellow showing there. So I'm just going to keep sewing now. You may find a pin is helpful to hold this at this stage. Um, I don't I have pins because they eat me, bite me, pin me, something. So I want to sew until I get onto that bit of binding that's come around the corner and with my needle down so that I can pivot and it's not going to get lost. I'm going to pivot that round and usually I just do a little back stitch just on that corner just, as a, just to make sure it's held properly and then I continue on going all the way around my quilt in the same manner and I'll just keep going up here because I've got that join just ahead of this here so that I can just show you how that sits. does feel slightly bulky where the join is, um, but it still seems to come over fine. So just make sure that we're holding that bit down and then this little bit follows on nicely. Just take your time, it's not so hard to do, it gives it a nice firm finish 
and it of course is a whole lot faster than doing it all by hand. So you can see that I've got that little fold over there. Now it is a little bit open so you could easily just come back and do a little hand stitch just to hold that down. I often don't but certainly if I was doing something a little bit um, that was worrying me about that I would do a little hand stitch just to hold that fold over there. Other than that I'm just going to keep on going around until I finish my binding. So I'm just coming to the very end of my binding. How exciting, this quilt is nearly done. A few inches here. It's all gone together pretty well. Here we go, this is the end. With a back stitch to finish, I'm just going to trim my threads there, front and back. And we have one quilt with a little flanged binding. How fun is that? So yes, I now have two quilts that look very, very similar. The quilting is slightly different, not a lot else that's different. Uh, but I also wanted to see how it was going to go with the um, where did I put the pattern? With the backing on the one that's hanging up here, which I won't take down but I'll flip over so you can see I had actually used up and I have mentioned this on the pattern itself um, and I've done a little picture of it on the pattern here I've suggested that if you want to use up because there was quite large leftover so that we could get the circles out and things that you could join them together in some way uh, to make it more economical by just buying an extra meter of fabric um, or of course in the case of this one I have put a whole piece of fabric as the backing here, one of the range of fabrics, this uh, modern garden range from Newtex. But on this one, I have uh, done all the joins and things, and I've even included a little panel here which has got all the selvages. I thought that was kind of fun so that I knew which fabrics they were, but you can see I've done a sort of patchworky bit using up all sorts of leftovers on that quilt, which I thought was fun. Good to do it differently. I've just used the one piece on this one. And so here we've got our quilt all finished, got a little applique bird on it, and that's pretty much all there is to say about that, I think. So the pattern's on my website on gourmetquilter.com. The quilt is called that Wednesday quilt because I made it on a Wednesday. And the fabrics I've used are modern garden range, just a small range from Newtex fabrics. Uh, so thank you very much.